think this is what is missing from the equation, that human beings do not have awareness of sustainability, don't have the experience of sustainable society, so they don't promote it. Welcome generous viewers to Good People, Good Works. Today's program is the second part of our interview with Dr. Alfredo Sver Yunus, an economist, spiritual activist, peace advocate, vegan, and president and founder of the Jambuling Institute for Human Transformation. Alfredo Sver Yunus holds a PhD in environmental economics from the University of Wisconsin, USA. During his 29 years at the World Bank, he held several key positions, including serving as its principal spokesperson at the United Nations, the World Trade Organization, and other international forums. Issues he focused on while at this non-governmental organization included environmental protection, human rights, constructive economic development by applying principles of spirituality and ethics, and other issues. Dr. Sver Yunus also recently published two important books, Another Meaning of Enlightenment and Ten Spiritual Laws to Heal the World. In 2005, Dr. Sver Yunus founded the Institute, which seeks to raise awareness about the need for human transformation in order to heal the world. The Institute has offices in Washington, D.C., USA, and Lisbon, Portugal. The Zambulin Institute for Human Transformation essentially uh, is defined by its own title. Zambulin means world. So we are looking not only as individual, but also our collective existence. We are not only looking at human beings, but all sentient beings, because they also belong to Zambulin. We are not only looking at beings, but also nature, that is also a being, that also belong to Zambulin human transformation we have made uh, central to us to look at issues of why people do what they do and what are the main foundations of this transformation. We began with a major emphasis on human rights and responsibilities. It's not only rights but who is responsible to execute this right, to respect this right, to implement this right. <laughs> The Institute seeks to enhance the human condition through such programs as Silent Meditation for World Peace, where participants experience self-realization and transformation. We are with the people all the time, on the streets, in jail, in farms, in communities, you know, and so on. We go where many people don't go. We just want to touch people in a way that they say, mm, I understood it. And when someone says to you, actually, my life changed and I'm happier, that's all I want to know. In Colombia, there is a city around Bogota, a shanty town. There are nearly three million people. We did meditation, 6,200 people came to share silence for 45 minutes. It's like the lotus flower. You are born in the mud, but you can produce beautiful colors and beautiful shape. People are fundamentally excellent producers of goodness, compassion, and love. He strongly feels the world needs to expand its collective consciousness in order to reach its potential. I like to say to the public that we are all good people. I would say that goodness is the essence of humanity and that we actually have the solution in ourselves that we were not sent to this planet to suffer that we were not sent to this planet to really be in a terrible position oh my god you know uh, I am poor I need to suffer no 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 maybe by being poor you will have to self-realize something and that's the reason you're here rich the same don't feel like you are you know in your own little hole. No, we are all part of the same nature. So our future destiny lies in collective transformation. Mm -hmm. 
Dr. Sver Yunus once conducted an interesting experiment during a lecture to demonstrate the power of extending our collective consciousness. I did an experience in a seminar. I had 200 people. I had a basket with 200 coins of one euro each. I distribute the coin to each person and I ask the question, can you live with one euro a day? A lady stood up and said, with one euro I cannot do anything. And then people began to get enraged. Nah, this is ridiculous, we cannot live with one euro a day, this is crazy. I said, okay, give me all the euros back. So they put all the 200 euros back in this basket. And I said, can we live with 200 euros a day? Together. And someone said, yeah, we could. 200 euros is, you know, seven days a week, 1,400 euros. Yeah, we could make it. With the first few, we'll buy a bag of potatoes. With the second few, we'll buy rice. So the essence is create the condition for expanding and really deepening on collective consciousness. So why didn't you answer, we could live collectively? Hmm. You know, why don't you share your euro? The first reaction was, no way. My euro, nobody went around and said, let's get together with two euros, maybe we can do it with four euros. We can do it. That's the issue of collective reality of humanity. When Good People, Good Works returns, Dr. Alfredo Sever Yunus speaks on the environment and how its condition relates to the collective human consciousness. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to Good People, Good Works, featuring peace advocate, economist, spiritual activist, and vegan Dr. Alfredo Sver Yunus. Dr. Sver Yunus is very much concerned with the state of our environment and feels elevating humanity's level of awareness is the key to rehabilitating. They're intimately correlated. If the level of collective consciousness happens to rise, automatically we help nature to rise. If the quality of the natural environment rises, automatically it affects the quality of our consciousness. So this law of interdependence is the key to understand this connection between nature and human beings. And if we understand this principle, that there is a strict correlation between the quality of the natural environment and your ability to reach higher levels of transformation, then you will not destroy nature. You know, if I know that that tree is the essence for my children's future, nobody will touch it. Now, we need to create educational systems that heightens interdependence and not independence. So these are very practical things we are promoting, and there are books, there are you know, ways to change the education system, to change the health system for natural and complementary medicine. You know, there are systems to deal with business differently and also make profits. I have a story of the guy who invented paints that are based on water and not on oil and chemicals, and the guy is making billions of dollars. You know, it's not like he, okay, did this paint with no toxic element and went bankrupt. No. All of us are buying this paint. So basically people respond to this reality of a green economy, a sustainable economy. And it's just a matter of telling those who are entrenched here, please open a little bit because you might also make money out of better computer, you know, better industries, you know, and so on. Climate change is the number one threat to the continued existence of all life on Earth. Animal agriculture is the primary driver of global warming, and scientists have estimated that 51% plus of all global greenhouse gas emissions stem from the production and consumption of animal products. Grain currently fed to livestock is enough to feed 2 billion people, an amount that could end world hunger permanently. 
More than one-third of the world's cereal and over 90% of soya harvest are used as animal feed. Look at what is happening with agriculture. The largest majority of the grain produced in the world is for animal feed, not for people. I am a strict vegetarian. I am a vegan vegetarian. I am a vegetarian vegan not only because of that. I am vegetarian vegan because of the way I personally see my spiritual transformation. I know from my own meditative experience that alcohol, meat products, milk even, and eggs and so on, limit my transcending. I believe seriously that there is a lot to do in terms of the relationship between my spiritual growth and what I eat. They're very much interdependent. Dr. Sver Yunus next shares how the Japanese people benefited from the vegetarian diet during the first half of the 20th century. So the Japanese economy became very much a land-based economy, a vegetarian economy. And they found out in their research that as a result of it, no heart attacks, all this cancer you know, diminished to almost zero in Japan. So they realized that this type of food intake had a major positive impact on the people. It's clear that a vegetarian path is very powerful, it's very important. Dr. Sver Yunus encourages all to envision a tranquil world and to take constructive action right now to heal our planet. Don't worry whether he or she is going to do the same. You do it. You have the power of change. The change is inside yourself. If there is anything we are sure of, is that we have to change. Don't stay, you know, rigid. Don't stay put. Don't stay immobile. And you will see that actually everything is possible. I don't want the historians to write about us and say, this was a generation that was not willing to actually make a difference in the world. Let's do it, and let's do it now. In October 2009, the peace advocate attended the International Alchemy Conference in Los Angeles, USA, where as part of the Golden Pyramid of Peace Project, a world peace prayer was said in 16 languages. Dr. Sver Yunus participated by reciting a powerful prayer in Spanish and in Aymara, one of the languages of the indigenous peoples of Bolivia. In the Aymara language, Amuki means silence. The following is called the Amuki Mantra, or Mantra of Silence. Om Shanti, 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 Om Amuki. Om Amuki, 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 Om Shanti. Om Shanti, 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 Om.
We appreciate Dr. Alfredo Sever Yunus taking time from his busy schedule to speak with us about the uplifting work of the Institute through the group's peace promoting work. May our world become ever more harmonious and loving. For more details on the Jambuling Institute for Human Transformation, please visit silentpeacemeditation.com. Another meaning of enlightenment and 10 spiritual laws to heal the world may be downloaded free of charge from the same website. Courageous viewers, thank you for being with us for this edition of Good People, Good Works. Coming up next is the world around us after noteworthy news. May humanity join hands and work towards a peaceful and magnificent world side by side. For more details, please see www.suprememastertv.com forward slash GPGW.